Welcome back. Today we're gonna be painting another robot boy. <laughs> we're painting the Warhammer. Uh, this is gonna be my make my, my this is my favorite BattleTech mech. Uh, he's gonna be joining our our lance that we have uh, with our Griffin, and we'll have two other models coming down the line to complete our our lance. But let's start off with our contrast of our Blood Angels red. Really like how the this turned out on my other guy, so I'm just gonna kinda continue that paint trend on this dude. So we're gonna paint a lot of the same areas that we painted on that last one. Um, we're gonna paint on this guy. So this one's got a lot more guns. He is a heavy mech versus the Griffin, which is a medium. So the amount of weapons that it has on it and all that kind of stuff is pretty significant, um, pretty significantly different. I'm just trying to right now figure out where I want the red color to be on this guy. Um, keeping in within the same theme of the other one. So let's go here. Probably would want this, this little platform here. Seems down in here, I'm just looking in there to see where things are. I think I want kind of in the middle there. A little, it's a little bit of an awkward model, but we're gonna work through this and figure out where our panel lines are gonna be and all that. So I think we're gonna go to there, all the way to here. And it's okay if we hit it right now and we don't want it to be like that later. Um, you can always go over this with the black paint. It's the, the benefit of using darker colors. I think, should that piece be, let me see, let me look at the, yeah, we have some of the back of the head here. So let's actually, You this just from time to time I'm gonna grab I'm grabbing my Griffin model that we did and checking where the colors are on that guy to match them with the, the areas on this one. And I think the back of the head should be colored in. So let's color this piece right here. And then go on to here. So if you're wondering where the pieces are, the actual glass is like in there. It's not this top piece. Um, I'm, I'm assuming, I'm guessing anyway. I think that's what it is. Um, so we're going to kind of go with the, that assumption for now. If it changes, you'll, we'll change it later, but I think the top is just a top hatch. So let's continue picking out our areas here. For this, we're leaving that whole 
middle section there. Let's just go down there. I like these models. They have good detail and not like too much. It's not like, you know, unnecessary. I think they have it all in the right spots. Um, I mean, but these, you know, these models are way different than what we usually paint. Um, these things have been around for a while. So they have the benefit of lots of historical data. And then also like, you know, there was, you know, drawing and stuff like that was models and concept art and everything was way different, you know, when these guys came out. And it's just, it seems like they just kind of embraced what they were. Like, cause if you look at like old space Marines and all that, they, they were blocky and stuff like these are, like these are very blocky, but you know, when technology changed, you know, for models and casting and stuff, they went through and updated and really made them kind of fit with the times. Um, and Battletech kind of didn't. I know it's probably like a controversial thing to say, but you know, it, for the longest time it was, it really kind of turned me off from Battletech and MechWarrior. It's because the art style is, you know, very different than, you know, what you're used to nowadays. Um, and so it's like, you know, if you grew up on, grew up on anime and all that kind of stuff too, then, you know, those types of robots are very different than these robots. But I don't know, as I'm getting older, they're growing on me. They grow on me a bit more. Um, so yeah, you know, just a little history there of what I think anyway is interesting, especially for giant robots, like giant robots are the coolest thing ever invented. So I'll take whatever giant robots I can get. Uh, especially in a miniature game form. Like, could you imagine if you could play, I mean, some people have written homebrew rules for Gundam models to use them in a miniature game, but it's different. I think like a miniature game that's supported versus like some homebrew stuff, I think you miss a lot of, you miss a lot of points when you do things. Um, Kind of homebrewy. Uh, you're not, you know, you're not really a designer, and you, as as much as you probably don't want to admit it, right? Or they don't want to admit it. You, I'm not yelling at you. <laughs> you know, they have biases, right? So they're not necessarily thinking about game by uh, balance. They're thinking about like, oh, I really like this guy. I want this guy to be really cool. So I think that's where, you know, a lot of people have problems separating, you know, their personal feelings from what they're making when they do homebrew rules and stuff like that. And that's what turns me off from them a lot. It just doesn't make a, make for a balanced game traditionally. I'm sure there's some out there that are, are great, but you know, it's different than like having professionals go through it and, you know, test it and all that jazz. Especially like the testing part is important too, is like getting people to play test it and tell you like, oh, this feels right, this doesn't feel right. I mean, coming from me who works in the game industry, right? It is important to get that feedback of, hey, this works, this doesn't work. And then what can we do to make things better? And, you know, so, 
Yeah. Uh, oop, painting too far on there. Getting a little sloppy with this red paint right now. I'm just trying to get this finished. Okay. Now let's go to our dark blue gray for the big majority of this. Actually, did I want to do some of those? Mm, let's see. Maybe that. Let's just do, let's get back on our red really quick, really fast. Let's get some of this red color in here. And then for this guy, we'll just get the little side piece right there. Okay, now we can go to the dark blue gray. So that's our dark blue gray. I really like this color a lot. And then we're just gonna cover this up. You can probably use a bigger brush if you wanted to, to get this done faster. But you wanna make sure you're not, you're leaving it, getting it on smoothly, that it's not streaking anything like that. paint these joints black and stuff like that it's okay to get this color on it because this color is way lighter than what its final version will be so it's okay that we'll paint on top of it Just keep at it. These brushes are starting to annoy me. I do have another set of brushes that I haven't opened yet. Oh wait, I have some here that could be helpful. I got a good old Faithful Hobby Lobby brush. And it's got one really long hair on it. That is, there we go. That was bugging me there. Is it 
stitching. I'm not sure how I like how this thing is posed on its base. I haven't really, I mean, I just got into this game. I don't, I haven't really thought about taking these things apart and, you know, rebasing them. Um, they come pre-assembled and everything like that. So I haven't really thought about taking it apart and being like, oh, let's see what happens if I put this arm there and, you know, like reposing it and stuff like that. Um, certainly could, I don't see reason not to. Just make sure you're really getting on those areas so that you cover up all those the white spots. little waist joint is a little it's a little tight in there so we got these like lasers right here that are okay if we touch because all our weapons are just flat black um, base color so it'll work out for us So far, so good. And we're just working our way up the torso here. And I guess it goes without saying too, is that this is the paint scheme that I chose to go with from the ones that I did. Uh, we did the Wolverine and the Griffin and I really liked how the Griffin turned out and I actually like the Griffin as a mech so kind of worked out just painting some of these like panels on here kind of how we did on the the shield of the griffin's arm. Just to kind of help match the, the color schemes together better. And I don't know what house this is or, you know, whatever. I don't really know a whole lot of the Battletech lore. So if you know, maybe you leave a comment and be like, oh, you're painting it like these people. Um, because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just painting it what looks cool. Which for me, the rule of cool is the most important thing in any game. It's not, you know, how competitive is it or how strong is it? You know, I, I really like, is it cool? And of course I like winning, but it's more fun Oops, when you win with something you like versus something that you, you just have because it's the best, you know? And I'm not really into min-maxing, I guess. I just like to use what I like. And then have more fun. Like in Mech, I've been playing Mech Warrior online, which is free to play. You can get it on Steam. Um, and I have like this mech and some other, and the Griffin and stuff too. And like I haven't really won any games. 
but I'm still having a lot of fun. Uh, let me see what we did on here. That is black. So I just want to make sure that I'm painting the things the right colors. But you know, it doesn't really matter to me if I'm winning or losing. I'm, as long as I'm having fun, that's the main point. It's the main takeaway from these, because it's a game. You're supposed to have fun when you play games. It's not some super serious thing. And people definitely do take it that way. But you know what? Just try to avoid playing with those people because they'll make it not fun for you. You don't need to be as miserable as they are. And nobody needs to be that miserable. Let me just get the front of this here. And then in there, we'll do the same thing just to get Okay, now we switch to black to get just a regular black, and then we'll get all of our guns. I'm just trying to see what is what here. Scheme 2 is really simple, it seems like, um, from, I mean, there's there's a couple versions. There's Alpha Strike, which is the one I think I'm going to be playing, and then there's, like, Battletech, the version of, like, that's on, like, a paper mat that has hexes grids and stuff on it. Alpha Strike is more like a traditional um, miniature game, where you use rulers and measuring and stuff like that, but... It's not overly complicated in the sense that the, the regular version of this game, you know, you have your weapon loadouts and you like super overheat and like all these other extra steps. This, this is more like, and like, you know, it's kind of like, um, the original version is kind of more like, a I want to say like war machine or hordes, like when the damage spills over into your sections and then you have to keep track of all the health with the pips and stuff like that. Um, the Alpha Strike version has some of it, but it's a lot pared down. Like the amount of health that you're dealing with is small and it doesn't go into sections. It's just, here's one health bar. And then there's, you know, then there's like a critical bar and that's it. It's not per system or anything like that. So I like that about it. Um, I don't necessarily like that, you know, you don't get all these different weapons and stuff. You just get this many attacks, you know, a certain amount of attacks and that's it. They're not like, oh, there's this weapon and then there's this weapon. Um, so, you know, there's a give and a take to all of it. You just gotta find out which one you like and play. Who knows, maybe I'll play both, but for now, this is I'm going. It's also, you know, it's really it was really hard to find information on this game of like, you know, how do you build a team? How do you, you know, how do you play? Um, and as a lot of it was like, well, you got to decide with your opponent that you know what era you're playing, and um, then you kind of decide like from there how many points you want. And I was like, what do they do at like? tournaments and stuff and I couldn't really find the information I mean I wasn't I was I didn't look too hard all of it um but like you'd think it would be pretty easy to find out but so we we ended up on like 200 points uh using pv which is point value I think is what it's called in the in the book not book but like on the thing and you have to go on this web the website that makes these guys and then it has different versions of them 
and their point values next to them and you can mess with it a little bit like to get your pilot skills higher to get them make them cost more points but then they also like you know shoot better and all that kind of stuff um like i said it's definitely one thing that i'm getting about mech warrior is that there's like a lot of it seems like unnecessary complications to things <laughs> um which you know could be an unfair assessment but it's you know it's like a lot a lot of older games rely on a lot of complexity to make them fun um, and you know as time went forward you know they didn't really update it and they just left it at that as it was like oh it's just hard it's, and then they, they made it say oh this is a hard game you know versus like updating their systems and making it playable it just kind of became the staple of the game. Like basically it's hard just because it, just because to make it the game, it, it is hard. And I'm not a super fan of that. Um, it's one, it feels lazy to me. Um, and then it also, you know, alienates a lot of people. And I'm not like one of these people that just has to be like, it's like, oh, everything has to be for everybody all the time. But like, when when something is so severely washed over with rules and extra bits that don't really need to be there, it's like, and you know, that's my opinion, so. But like, I definitely got that way about um, the Batman miniature game. Like, I was pretty down to play it, and then, until I actually played it, because <laughs> there's so many rules. Um, I, I built a crew for Bane, and I think, and then I, you know, wanted to make, like, a cheat sheet so that I could just easily reference, like, what all the special rules do and everything for everybody. And I think for, like, I think I had, like, eight guys it was something like 20 pages of rules uh, just just to do their special stuff, like their special rules. And I was like, this is way too much. So that really kind of got me away from that game. It was extremely rules heavy. And it wasn't like universal rules that everybody has it was just like oh no this guy has this one special rule and then this guy has this one special rule <laughs> so it was just too much too much i just want to have fun i just want to get my models down and play with my friends and then you know maybe be able to get a couple of games in I don't need to be sitting there for an hour, well, more than an hour, um, not playing it. I'm just looking up rules for most of the time because it's not fun. I think I've said it like before on this channel, but like my favorite rule system is bolt action. If you're wondering, like, oh, hey, what's your favorite rule system? It's bolt action. It's, it's, a, it's a World War II miniatures game, and it's not like the thing. I, I played, tried Flames of War. I didn't like it because it was like when you built your army, you had to have, you know, you had, it had to be historically accurate. It had to be like, oh, you had to, you, you're playing the this 10th Infantry Platoon. And the 10th Infantry Platoon had this many infantry units, this many tanks, and I was just like, oh my god, this is, this is dumb. Let me just, like, I like the, the Warhammer way of building your army, and then you're playing that army. And Bolt Action took, kind of had that idea, right? It was, you got to pick everything. You, had to have, you just had to have a general and X amount of troops... And then you could, and then this, like, 
it, it had rules on how many of everything you could have, and, but it wasn't, if you want to play, you have to have this many tanks because you have to play this specific company of airborne or whatever. So you really got to build your list how you wanted. And that was way cool. And then the other thing they did is that pretty much every weapon is is the same. Like everyone moves, every infantry model moves the same distance. Every tank moves the same distance. They all have the same weapon, like the same weapon profile. So like to shoot and stuff is the same for every, like for rifles for on, on all sides, the same for submachine guns on all sides. And then the faction that you chose it kind of modified those rules. So like Americans, like, you know, they had, their weapons were semi-automatic in World War II. So they don't suffer penalties from moving and shooting like the other armies do. But like the Germans, you know, they have like Hitler's buzzsaw, which is, is one of the rules in the game where it's, you know, your machine guns get X amount of extra dice when they shoot. Um, so things like that, like flavor stuff, like your armies add flavor to the, the rules and they just modify the rules in a, in a little bit of a way. And I thought that was really neat. And I was really hoping for that kind of system for um, Star Wars Legion, um, which is funny because someone had made bolt action type rules for Star Wars Legion. Those are pretty cool. But, you know, Fantasy Flight loves their tokens, <laughs> which, you know, I can't blame them. The, which is weird, though, because, like, for them wanting to have all these tokens all the time in all their games, they don't sell, like, specialty tokens. So it's like, then what are they really doing with, <laughs> like, why are they doing tokens then? It's just, like, more stuff for them to print. I think they would get, it would be better off if they... Got away from tokens, honestly. And then also like their special special dice. Like I hate special dice. Like just please <laughs> let me use D6 dice. Okay, and then we'll go to our gun metal that we have over here. I think we have some, do we, do we, do we? We have some. And we'll put it on this guy. Okay, so then we have our black down, everything. So now, let's get our cockpit painted. We'll get our uniform green. Put it here. And we get our escorpina green. We're gonna do like a little mix like we did, except it's not gonna be as good as the griffins because the cockpit is so small the, the glass on here is very teeny so let's take let's get all that droplet off there okay and then it's ready and here Scorpina green while it's still kind of wet in there. And do like a little swipe. Ooh, we're getting it all over the place, aren't we? Mix some white into that Escorpina green and then do the same kind of thing. It's a little bit messy in there, but it's okay because we can just take our blue gray and then clean all that back up and we 
also got to take some white here. And then just touch it right here because we had spilled some in there because you need white for the contrast paint to work. And we're just going to go through and see if there's any white spots that are showing up. I'm going to clean those up as best as we can. We have like a whole part of his leg over here. That's not been painted right in here. And then we will take our brush and then we're going to get the Blood Angels red again. Down here. And then it should be pretty dry because we did a really thin version of it right there. And then we'll take our known oil wash and go over the legs and let this thing sit for a second uh, while we let it dry. And then we'll go in with our dry brush and stuff and get all the other details. So just get over the whole thing. Kind of settle into those little detail areas and color in those panel lines for us. Um, it'll help us if we missed any of the white. in and we're just getting the blue gray areas right now I don't really want to get the red areas because the contrast kind of works as a wash as well this okay so let's let that sit I did notice some red spots that I didn't get to though so let's just get those really quick again let's get this out here I need I notice a spot in here that we didn't get Just make sure that we got, it's like you can't really see the joints of the arm, so we're just making sure that we cover that area as good as we can. All right, cool, so let's let that sit. And we will come back when it's all dry and finish it up. So we'll see you in a second. Welcome back. Let's get to dry brushing. So let's do our 
Ghost Gray dry brush first. And we'll get to the metallic dry brush. Touch, light touch is the key here. Just go over the black areas, the black gray areas, the guns. Okay, now we get our gun metal, and we get the reds, and lightly lighter over the, the gray. So let's go. Weapons need it especially. Some on the body here. Okay, now we get some of our copper. Do kind of a bit of a, wa a dry brush of it here. This is going to help with our heat burns and stuff on them. Need some on here. My neighbors are just like fucking yelling at each other. Okay, and then we get our brush here. And we get our purple wash, the Struchy Violet. ends here. Same thing here on the lasers that are on the chest. And we just kind of get it off our brush and then just help kind of feather it lightly into the rest of it. And that's it. And that is our war machine. As always, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. New videos every Wednesday. And we'll catch you on the next one.